Today, we're gonna to be taking a look at the AnyCubic Cobra S1 Combo, a printer that I'm really excited to work with for two reasons. The first thing that I find really interesting about the Cobra S1 is the fact that this is AnyCubic's first attempt at a Core XY 3D printer. The second reason I'm excited to work with this printer is the sheer amount of features that they threw at the feature stack. For being their first attempt at a Core XY machine, this was a really bold move of AnyCubic, and I'm really excited to see how this plays out. So since AnyCubic packed this printer with absolutely everything they could throw at it, let's go ahead and look at what we have. Starting off, the Cobra S1 is a fully enclosed multi-material 3D printer with an available build volume of 250 millimeters cubed with print speeds up to 600 millimeters per second. Mostly, these specs aren't going to surprise anybody, but where this printer diverges from its counterparts is in thermals. For thermals, we have three interesting things to talk about. The first being that the nozzle and hotting can reach temperatures up to 320 degrees Celsius, a little bit more than we're seeing from most manufacturers. And following in the same theme, the bed has a little bit more as well at 120 degrees Celsius. Now, when it comes to the bed, this could be a good thing or a bad thing, depending on how you view the situation. The third thing we need to talk about when it comes to thermals is something that, again, we're not really seeing from other manufacturers, but something that I have a feeling that we're going to be seeing a lot more of moving forward, and that would be in reference to their ACE units. In case you're wondering, ACE stands for AnyCubic Color Engine, and that would be the units that you see on the top of the S1 combo. The difference is not only are the ACE units an integral part of the color system, but they also double as a dry box reaching temperatures of 55 degrees Celsius. The dry box functionality can be used in several different ways. It can be used during printing operations, but it can also be used outside of normal printing. You can even set timers for how long you want it to be active for your filament. With the ability to set timers from both the screen and in your slicing software for however long you want your filament to be dried. Essentially, what AnyCubic has done is they've taken two separate products and combined them into one unit. And the concept is so elementary that you have to wonder why haven't other companies just done this before? Again, with this, I think that AnyCubic has set a precedent that we can expect to see followed through with other manufacturers in the future. Since we're on the topic of the ACE unit, one other thing that I like about this unit as compared to others on the market is when it comes to loading, it's a lot easier. There are no buttons or levers or anything you really have to mess with. All you have to do is drop the filament in and then feed it into the slot. Once it's detected, the unit takes over loading from there. One thing I firmly believe is when it comes to consumer products, the simpler the operation for the user, the better. So this is something that I really like to see with the ACE units. When it comes to swapping the nozzle, it's kind of a mixed bag as the nozzle isn't standalone in the S1. As the official nozzle by AnyCubic is, for the most part, glued into the hot end. With this said, removing and replacing the hot end and nozzle are about as easy as it comes as the S1 features a simple drop down and pull up lever to simply release the entire hot end. It's attached by a cable towards the rear of the print head and all it needs to be is unclipped. Now I know a lot of people in the community aren't thrilled when a company bakes their nozzles into their hot end, but for me, I don't realistically see it as a problem. And there are several third party manufacturers for other nozzle and hot end options for the S1. Honestly, this topic is mostly about personal preference, but I do see the benefit of companies baking their nozzles into the hot end as it mitigates a lot of the issues that newer consumers might see when coming to the hobby. If you find yourself printing ABS or ASA, then you might be happy to know that the S1 features a fairly decent filter system. For filtration, the S1 makes use of these activated charcoal bags. Simply pull off the panel towards the rear inside of the unit and drop one of these in and you should be good to go. So far in our testing with Hatchbox ABS, this system has worked really well. Another point of personal preference that we see with the S1 is the fact that there are no glass panels on this 3D printer. Personally, I am in the anti-glass panels camp when it comes to 3D printers, as I think there is a litany of reasons why it's a really bad idea. Now the screen on this printer is absolutely gorgeous and incredibly responsive, and it's one feature that I really like about this 3D printer. Something about this design feels like you should be able to reach up and just pull the screen off to use it remotely. Now, we have quite a bit more to talk about, but before we get into that, let's talk about today's sponsor, PCBWay. 
PCBUA offers a wide range of services to makers, hobbyists, and designers. Imagine you're working on or prototyping your own design at home, and you've decided that it would be really cool to have it made out of metal. Well, with today's sponsor, PCBWay, you can. PCBWay offers a wide range of industrial grade services available to makers, hobbyists, and designers. Services like industrial grade SLA and SLS 3D printing, along with the ability to have your parts manufactured out of 3D printed metals. Not only that, PCBWay also offers services like sheet metal fabrication and CNC machining. Along with industry leading PCB manufacturing, PCBWay is the go to for hobbyists and those working on their own project. So if you're looking for help with your next part, idea, or project, then check out PCBWay at PCBWay.com. Now, getting back to our printer, let's talk about connectivity and slicer options. For the Cobra S1, we have the obvious Orca slicer option, but alongside this, Anycubic has their own slicer, which is Slicer Next. When it comes to Orca Slicer, the S1 does have a profile in the official Orca Slicer build. However, there is one small issue. You see, we don't have any remote connectivity option when using the official version of Orca Slicer. Normally for most of my printers, I do prefer to use Orca Slicer as most companies forks of this slicing software tend to be extremely half-baked with a lot of bugs and feature issues. However, when it comes to any cubic, this definitely isn't the case. And I was pleasantly surprised to find out that their version of Orca Slicer is by far the best third-party implementation that I've ever seen. One of the best aspects of this has to be the device page. And unlike most manufacturers, this doesn't look like a half-baked last-minute school project. Everything on the device page looks intentional and well laid out. For Slicer Next, you can definitely tell that Anycubic took their time and paid attention from the home page to the remote printing pop-up all the way to the device tab. And the best part of the Slicer being that you don't need an account or even be connected to the internet. And best yet, unlike other Slicers that persistently scan your internal network, Slicer Next allows you to add a printer by IP rather than relentlessly scan your network. Historically, I've always preferred to use the official Orca Slicer over any third-party fork because for the most part, they don't really add anything to the user experience. On the contrary, they normally tend to take things away. But with Anycubic, it's completely the opposite. And this is the first time I find myself preferring to use the third-party slicer. Now, with that out of the way, why don't we go ahead and take a look at a few of the prints we were able to get off of the S1 combo. If you watch my previous video, then a few of these prints are going to look fairly familiar. The idea is to go ahead and print the same type of files on different printers so we can go ahead and compare the quality. The concept's fairly straightforward. I know what kind of quality I can get on a machine that I know is reliable and that I trust, but what are we gonna see on the Cobra S1? Making a return for our testing would be our friendly turtle here. And the quality on this is so good that when I put them next to each other, it was really difficult to see any difference at all, to the point where I needed to flip this over and scratch S1 into the bottom of it because I can't tell the difference between this printer's quality and the other, which I found was going to be an ongoing theme. As for part for part, it's incredibly difficult to tell the difference. And each individual item, I had to make sure I went ahead and marked for filming. For being their first Core XY, I have to say that the Cobra S1 is showing really clean geometry and layer lines, and we kind of figured that that's going to be the case. The real question is, how are we looking for color bleed and drift? For multicolor 3D printing, the first place that you're going to see any sort of issue is going to be with black and white or white and red. So again, we're focusing on those three primary colors. And so far with all of our prints, we're not really seeing any sort of issues with any bleed or color drift. Now, there are two areas where 3D printers tend to struggle quite a bit. One of those would be text on like a 3D print like this. And the other one of those would be its first layer. And for a multicolor print with white on black, this came out near absolute perfect about as good as you're going to ever see from a 3D printer with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. 
And once we flip this over, you'll see that our first layer comes out completely perfect. Now, keep in mind, this doesn't take up the complete bed. So let's go ahead and do something that does. Once again, we've done this print before on a smaller printer, but I felt like this piece would be something that would take advantage of the much larger bed of the S1 combo. For our white, red, and black, our colors came out absolutely perfect, and we had no color bleed or drift of any kind. The one area where I could have made an improvement is I probably could increase the thickness of the red and not seem as much infill in the background, but realistically, I didn't want to print this again. But remember, this print is as much a first layer test as it is a test of the color printing. And when we flip it over, we'll see that we're probably about 95% on our first layer. If I was going to nitpick a little bit, I would say there's a little section right here on the back corner where we see a little bit of artifacting. With the imperfections being so small that I'm not really sure I can even get it on camera. And by the way, if you're wondering how I got this texture of this top layer, that's called Hilbert Curve. And it's easily one of my favorite top and bottom layer patterns. During my testing, I made sure to print all sorts of things with this 3D printer, most of which I'm not going to be showing in the video today as they don't really address my primary concerns when I was testing this 3D printer. Primarily, I was looking for color drift or bleed, dimensional accuracy, and most importantly, our first layer. Our dimensional accuracy and tolerances have shown to be good from part to part, especially when we look at things like print in place 3D prints, as even on smaller prints like this, we're not really having any issues. And again, for our color bleed and drift, we're not really seeing any issues at all. And most of this has to do with how much filament is being purged during the filament swap. As for our first layer, that's where things differ a little bit. You see, any cubic went ahead and sent up this unit. And the same week we had this unit come in, I had three people go out and buy identical units. When it comes to testing, there's nothing more important than sample size. And we can't really tell you if the Cobra S1 is an awesome 3D printer based off just one unit alone. But when we look at something like our first layer, I can tell you that three out of the four machines had an awesome first layer with the fourth having quite a few issues, most of which being easily mitigated with a little bit of tweaking to the hardware. But when it comes to first layer, the only thing I could really say is your mileage may vary. Out of the four machines, three of them had excellent first layers and the fourth one needs a little bit of hardware modification. For the ACE units, I have seen a few reports in the community where people have trouble feeding filaments into the unit and then it getting stuck on the inside of the unit. For this specific unit, we did have an issue where the filament wanted to come back out. All I did was pull the filament out and then cut it and fed it back in, and it worked perfectly fine. So far, everything that I've experienced from the Cobra S1 has been a near perfect user experience, but just keep in mind that your experience may vary. So would I recommend the Cobra S1 combo as it sits today? Well, as of filming, this printer is listed at 549 and you're simply not going to beat this feature stack anywhere near that price with any other manufacturer. With this 3D printer, it's really easy to say that Anycubic is making some big and bold moves. Personally, I'm a huge fan of the go big or go home ethos, and it's safe to say that Anycubic has no plans on just going home. 